Seasonality is one of the most important components of our time series, and in this video I'm explaining to you what seasonality is, why it's important, and how we can handle it in our forecasting models. So let's get into it. On your screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through. It's going to tell us the ins and outs of seasonality and where it comes in for time series. So we're first beginning explaining what seasonality is. So as stated here, um, a time series is by nature indexed by time. And because it's indexed by time, we may have sort of like natural fluctuations in our time series, which are called seasonality. Now, you can think of seasonality as something like this. Imagine a time series that is forecasting or showing uh, ice cream sales at a, you know, a monthly index and a yearly level. We expect in the summer months, so June, July, August, that the sales of ice cream is going to be higher and in winter it's going to be lower. Now this pattern is going to be pretty consistent through time like on a yearly level. And so we will say we have a seasonality in our data. In this case, it would be a yearly seasonality. So that's just one example. But as I've stated here, seasonality can come in different time intervals. So take that even further, let's say for ice cream sales, we also we have that you know summer and winter seasonality component. We may also have a component at the daily level. For example, on the weekends we may sell more ice cream compared to the weekdays. I know that's just you know arbitrary, but that could be true. And because of that, we then have a seasonality at a week level and also at a yearly level. So we have multiple seasonality components within the same time series. And the whole point of this is that seasonality can come, you know at all different forms and sizes. The main point is to sort of diagnose it and be aware that it's there and then we can use it to our advantage when building forecasting models or you know how to deal with it. Now speaking of that, like I said, how we deal with it is quite subjective. The easiest way, which we'll discuss in this video, is simply by removing it from the data. Just completely eradicate it and don't do and don't have to worry about it um, anymore. There's another way which is basically using a model such as a REMA or Sarima which um, takes into account the seasonality components when constructing its forecasting technique. That will go into the next video, and it's a bit more, not advanced, but we're just not there yet. Um, in this video, we're talking about more about how we can just remove it and you know, it, 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 and limit its effect. One sort of, sort of pro to removing it is that it will make our data stationary. Now, for time series to be stationary, we discussed this in my previous video, uh, which will be linked somewhere on the screen here, is that the mean and the variance is consistent through time. In other words, the statistical properties of the time series do not change through time. Now, if you've got seasonal data, you can see how in the summer months, the mean is very different to the mean in the winter months. And so the mean is changing, and so the time series is not stationary. Therefore, we can seasonally difference our data, called deseasonalization, to make it stationary, and therefore, this is advantageous for us in our forecasting models. We're now gonna view a basic data set that I pulled from Kaggle. I've used this data set in my previous few videos, but it's just the US airline passenger volume um, from 1949 to 1960. The link to this data will be linked in the description below alongside this notebook and also the Medium article that comes with this um, this notebook. Uh, so if you wanna play around with it, do a bit of extra reading, it's all there in the description for you um, to go through in your spare time. So like I said, this shows us the US airline passenger volume um, through basically the 1950s. Now there's a few things to notice here straight away. It's increasing through time, so you know the average US airline passenger volume is increasing. But more than that, we can see there's a repeating periodic pattern here, which is the seasonal component. We see around every November, there's like a big dip, and then every August, there's a big increase. Clearly more people are going holiday in August um, and July, uh, in, the, in, the, in the summer months, um, and less people are going holiday in the, in the winter months, just like our ice cream sales. But anyway, the point is, this is obvious, and we can clearly see it. So we clearly can observe a yearly seasonal trend here. So in other words, 12 we are index, index by months. So every 12 value has some sort of dependency, right? Because we can see that every November, minus 12 November, minus 12 November, we have a trough. So that's kind of our, you know, our seasonal effects there, kind of every 12 data points, because we have 12 months in a year. So that's all great and good. But the question is now, how do we deal with it? Well, like I said, the main way we deal with seasonality is by removing it. Um, and one way to remove it is the idea through differencing. So I spoke to differencing about in my uh, previous video, uh, programming sectionality. And in this case, it's a very similar concept, but this time the differencing is going to be a seasonal level. So what differencing does, as uh, this equation that shows on the screen here, is that it takes a data point at y times step t, and all it's going to do is take the value away from it of this current time step in the previous season. So in this case, m is 12. So in this case, for example, maybe like November 1960 as yt, and the difference value is going to be November in 1959. So just the, the, the value of the data at our previous um, time step. And this is going to be our difference value dt. 
So that's basically it. It's not nothing too complicated, but this differencing is going to then remove the seasonal components because we're just averaging out, or no, not averaging out, we're taking away that yearly, you know, the yearly difference in the data because you can see if it's higher in, in August and we take away the value in the previous August, that's going to be the same kind of difference, hopefully, as the value of November and the previous November, right? Because you, we're assuming their difference kind of stays, you know, kind of, they're just, it's the same point, just kind of translated in the vector space upwards, if you kind of understand what I'm trying to say. Um, but, you know, nothing too complicated here. And the way we do seasonal differencing in uh, in Python is we simply apply this dot diff method to our pa in using pandas, and we also specify period equals 12 because we want to difference 12 data points backwards. If it was just dot diff, um, then it would just in, uh, difference one data point backwards, so the previous time step instead of the previous seasonal time step. And we simply apply this to our uh, series, in, our, in this case I called hashtag passengers, and then we just have our resultant series, which I called passenger season diff, and we're simply plotting this resultant series, we get this. Now to me, this looks pretty, you know, pretty good. We've got no obvious seasonality happening here anymore. Uh, maybe there's a bit of a cycle here, ever so slightly, but there's clearly no kind of seasonal effects we've seen before every 12 months. There's something obvious here, uh, which is pretty good. So we, we can officially say we have deseasonalized our data. Now the next thing we can do, if we take even one step further, is apply the ADF test, which is called the augmented decay filler test. And this is a type of test that tests that determines if our data is stationary. Now it's a statistical test. Um, if you're not too familiar with those, don't worry too much about it. But basically, what it's doing is that it's going to say the null hypothesis is that the data is non-stationary, um, and so the alternative hypothesis is that it is stationary. So in other words, we want our data to be at the five percent, one percent significance level. Um, again, if you're not familiar with this, read up on it, but it's not really too important. It's more just, you know, running it through the function, interpreting the results, and then we can say is it stationary or not stationary. So the way you run an ADF test is by simply passing in uh, the series that we had before, which was a different series. So in this case, it's going to be passenger season diff. Uh, this ADF filler function, you can call some SciPy. I just literally imported it, nothing too fancy here. And then we're going to just basically do some formatting to print our results so it makes it more readable for us. And then so running this function, what we get here is our ADF statistics minus 3.38. Uh, and you see here it's lower than a 5% significance, significance level and almost lower than a 1% significance level. So in other words, it's most likely that, you know, it is stationary. You know, we're kind of at quite an extreme point in our bell curve. Again, don't worry too much about the statistical test intuition. Uh, but in other words, we're very, very likely that this data is indeed stationary. Again, you can do further differencing. Like, you know, um, like I said, the regular one where you just do the previous data point. You can even do the box cox transform or logarithm transform if you want to also stabilize the variance. Again, these are all discussed in my previous videos, so make sure you check those out. Uh, but in this case, I think the data is adequately stationary and has been deseasonalized effectively. Now, to quickly recap what we'll be discussed in this video, seasonality is a component of time series where we get periodic fluctuations in the data. Um, seasonality can come in different shapes and forms, you know, weekly, yearly, daily, and so on. The most important part is being able to realize this in the data. And then we can handle it by either using a model that can handle seasonality or by simply removing it through seasonal differencing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like and subscribe button and I'll see you for more time series content soon.